You know, if I had a dollar for every time someone said to me, it's just a movie, don't take it so seriously. <laughs> well, I'd have like, you know, a whole bunch of dollars. Look, the point is, is that it is something I do here pretty often and for good reason. There is an entire world out there and it's probably best to try to live in it as often as you can. I mean, I get it. Don't let a fantasy get in the way of reality. So why is Star Wars so important to so many people, myself included? Why shouldn't we consider it another disposable piece of entertainment in the world of cinema and simply get on with our lives? Well, it's basically three reasons that I can see which provide the simplest explanation as to why these movies aren't just, you know, movies. And I'm going to start with the easiest and often underrated reason to watch basically any film. In my mind... There is no excuse for a studio to fail when they put out a blockbuster movie. You have no excuse. Your job is to entertain me, not lecture me. Back in the day when Star Wars was first made, I feel like they were checking one box and it was called fun. This kind of goes without saying, but since I'm trying to be as accurate as I can, I want to make certain I include what each movie is supposed to include, its entertainment value. Many of us have a job, have school, have kids, a spouse, or maybe all of these things. Perhaps we just have the stressors of life bearing down on us, like being sick, feeling inadequate, being bullied. It doesn't really matter what your anxieties are, but that we have an outlet to counteract them, to sometimes escape from them when we really need to. Some of my hardest, saddest, and sickest days were made markedly better because I found the time to sit back, relax, unwind, and watch my favorite trilogy. And while I don't condone avoidance of your problems, sometimes the only thing that we can do is sit and wait. What better way to do that than to watch the hero save the day? It can be motivating or encouraging. Perhaps Han facing torture at the hands of Vader and doing so with his confident smile and snarky attitude fills you with a sense of strength. I feel terrible. <laughs> or maybe it's the satisfaction of watching Luke walk through Jabba's palace like he owns the place, showcasing his growing power. My point is, it doesn't really matter why it does, but that a great movie entertains us. That a movie makes us feel better while facing the difficulties of real life. This is a priceless and often underrated benefit to a movie. At the very least, it serves as a surface solution to a daily need to unwind and relax. And at best, a movie distracts us from the harsh realities that we will all certainly face. No adventure, at least in my opinion, does this better than Star Wars. But what takes Star Wars beyond entertainment? What makes Star Wars so important in the long run? Well, it's because for this medium, Star Wars is our... Why are there so many stories of the hero or of heroes in mythology? Well, because that's what's worth writing about. Someone who has found or achieved or done something beyond the normal range of achievement and experience. A hero properly is someone who has given his life to something bigger than himself or other than himself. I've said it before on this channel and I'm going to keep saying it. Star Wars is the motion picture medium version of our mythos. Anakin is Arthur, and Obi-Wan is Merlin. And by the way, I don't hear anyone saying that those books are just books. Well, I guess some people must, you know, unless they've actually read them. Stupid reader. Mythos is more than just important. Mythos enforces archetypes, which are the architecture of an ideal to strive towards or even to steer away from. So what exactly is an archetype? Well, archetype comes from the Greek words archaean and typos, which mean to begin and type, respectively. But when placed together, they basically mean the ideal version of a type. This, of course, is mostly referring to the types of characters and stories. For instance, how about these Jungian versions of archetypes like the hero? Let's see if you bastards can do 90. And the caregiver. This is Weasley. <laughs> in the once and future king arthur is the hero and selfless leader commanded to be king by god and ultimately destined to fail and die for britain he is the hero whose journey consists of learning to be king through a series of magical lessons with his mentor and father figure merlin and what about luke he isn't great or even heroic because he's brave and adventurous, but instead is a Jedi because he lives to better himself by letting go of his fear, his anger, and his hate. He suffers failure and loss, but continues his journey, becoming the Jedi he is destined to be. With Anakin and Luke's story, we see the lessons of the failures of attachments, of fear, and a desire for great power. How fear does, in fact, lead to anger, hatred, and eventual suffering. What we see in these movies is a mythos that drives us to be braver, calmer, 
smarter, and embracing a path laid before us. A story that drives the human condition forward and instills objective morals that have existed for thousands of years. A philosophy of letting go and bravely embracing the difficulties that we must all face in life. And finally, that real compassion comes from honesty and action, not empathetic inaction. But while Mythos is more than enough for me to make Star Wars much more than a movie, there is one more core feature that both George Lucas and Dave Filoni purposefully put in all their movies and shows, and that's... So George has this hopeful story, and it's something that he's reiterated most times I've seen him after we've been making things uh, without him, is remember to make these stories hopeful. Remember to give that to kids because they really need it. You see, some kids grow up in nice neighborhoods and some in villages and third world countries, but every kid can still suffer. I don't really want to get into the details about how they do suffer, but that they do, and that something like Star Wars can instill a feeling of hope for children because they really do need it. That if in these stories people can hurt so much and suffer so greatly and still win the day, then no message could be greater for kids. Star Wars takes an active effort to help children become better, stronger, and braver adults, providing them with the one undying thing that can drive the helpless out of despair, and that's hope. So the next time that you hear someone say to you, it's just a movie, or even the next time that you feel like saying it, remember that Star Wars has already helped millions. And simply because it exists, all but guarantees that it will help future millions take a break and be entertained for a moment in their hard lives, help them to change their philosophy to that of a braver, calmer, and more compassionate individual, and provide the most vulnerable the hope that they need to carry on. I hope that you enjoyed this video. The future of this channel has become so much brighter because of all of you, and I hope that I've earned your subscription today. If you want to see why I believe that Anakin is the Chosen One, then check out this video.